How to make a backyard giraffe. My first step was to visit our local Habitat for Humanity store and procure a large piece of PVC pipe. So I found a piece that was probably about 10 feet long and then we also got a special fitting that had kind of a two prong so that would act as the place for the neck and head. I decided the giraffe should have a bit of a bend to its neck so we were able to take it to my husband's workplace and his boss let us use his special heater for bending PVC pipe so you can see what it looked like after we did the heating and it's got kind of a gentle bend about halfway or a little more than halfway up the pipe. The next step was to encircle the PVC pipe with chicken wire and so this was going to give the giraffe neck just a little bit more girth around it and so we encircled it with the chicken wire and then used some pretty long screws to kind of help fasten it in place. Once the body's framework was set, the next step was to make the giraffe head. And so I just wadded up some grocery bags and got out my masking tape and just kind of molded it into a general giraffe head shape. And then I was able to crumple up some extra paper bags and tape those a little bit more securely to make and then place the horns that were going to be in between the ears. And once I had finished shaping the head, I went ahead and attached it to the PVC fitting just with some masking tape. Then it was time to start paper macheing. So I mixed up some flour and water and added a little bit of salt uh, until it felt like it was a good consistency. And then I just uh, wet strips of newspaper over and over and over again uh, and wrapped that around the chicken wire until the giraffe was completely encased in paper mache. So after the paper mache layer came the plaster cast layer. So I probably bought about six yards of cheap muslin fabric and cut it into strips that were probably about three inches wide and then I mixed up some plaster that I got at Home Depot with some water Again, got it to uh, what felt like a good consistency and then just saturated each strip of cloth with the plaster and wrapped it around the giraffe and so I w did this for the entire giraffe body and head once the plaster coat was complete, I decided to go ahead and paint it with some brown acrylic paint to help seal it and act as a water barrier. Knowing that I intended for the giraffe to live permanently in the backyard and living in the northwest where we get a lot of rain every year, I decided that my next coat needed to be fiberglass. So I purchased some fiberglass cast tape that was four inches wide and I also purchased some fiberglass resin, so basically Bondo, and then set to wrapping the giraffe with a fiberglass coat. Once the fiberglass layer was complete, I painted it with another base coat of brown acrylic paint. Then once the light brown paint was dry, I painted the entire body of the giraffe with a dark brown acrylic paint. The next step was to paint in the light brown lines to help give the giraffe its unique patterned appearance. And once I had the pattern established, I then painted the mane of the giraffe. By this time I was almost done. 
but I wasn't happy with how my fiberglass coat went on the giraffe's head. Uh, I had quite a bit of really sharp pieces sticking out where the fiberglass cloth had frayed, where I had cut it, and so I had to sand the head down and then I purchased some additional fiberglass tape but this time I bought it in a one inch width and then rewrapped it with the fiberglass resin on the giraffe's head and this turned out much better and it was much smoother and I was able to get an effect that I really liked. So once the fiberglass coat on the giraffe's head was dry, I was able to paint it and add some detail spots, and I was able to attach some glass eyes that I had purchased off of Amazon, and that meant that it was now time for the shellac coat. So I painted the entire giraffe with two coats of shellac, and it was nice because it was a hot day, which meant that it actually dried fairly quickly and so I was able to get that on in a pretty efficient manner. The last step was to get it into the backyard and so what we did was dug a hole and by we I mean my husband dug a hole. It was about three feet deep and buried down there a hmm, I think it was about a six foot piece of PVC pipe that was two inches in diameter because remember my overall giraffe PVC was two and a half and so we had this two inch diameter PVC pipe sticking up out of the ground that had been buried in the ground and then what we were able to do is then feed the giraffe body with the PVC pipe over the two inch PVC pipe and have it stay securely in place and so in this picture I'm just doing last minute touch-ups on things that uh, needed a little bit of attention before we swung it around to face the bike path behind our house. So if you're ever in Corvallis on Country Club Drive in between 45th Street and 53rd Street, keep your eye out for the backyard giraffe.